Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Rob Bonta, California Attorney General. And I just want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you to our hosts here at the YWCA in downtown Los Angeles. I want to begin by introducing and thanking our, our partners here uh, because we wouldn't be here without the team effort, the, the coalition, the collaboration, the partnership. Uh, these are incredible organizations and leaders working to end sexual violence and support victims and survivors. Our host, Faye Washington, President and CEO of YWCA, Greater Los Angeles. Uh, my recently former colleague and amazing uh, leader, Senator Connie Leva. Alameda County District Attorney, Nancy O'Malley, who's been in this fight for so long, both locally, statewide, and nationally. Uh, Natasha Simone Alexenko, survivor, Natasha's Justice Project, uh, Voice Amplified, and Ilse Connect, Director of Policy and Advocacy for Joyful Heart. You're, you'll hear from each of uh, our incredible partners who helped get us uh, to today's announcement. I also want to acknowledge the talented public servants we have at my office, the California Department of Justice, who spend their days securing justice for victims and survivors at every stage of the criminal justice and healing process. Thank you to members of our Victims Services Unit and our Bureau of Forensic Services. Thank you to Maggie Krell, Special Advisor on Survivor Policy and Advocacy. And thank you to Dr. Sarai Crane, who I will introduce shortly. We're here today to announce a critical new initiative, as well as a new position to support victims and survivors, this announcement is unfortunately uh, direly needed. Every 68 seconds in the United States, someone is sexually assaulted. One in five women experience a rape during their lifetime. To help law enforcement secure justice, a survivor may choose to undergo a forensic medical examination to collect evidence. In 2020 alone, 2021 alone, California's public crime labs completed DNA analysis on more than 5,900 sexual assault evidence kits statewide. Alarmingly, however, according to a 2020 audit, primarily focused on kits collected prior to 2018, there was a report total of nearly reported total of nearly 14,000 untested sexual assault evidence kits at the local level across California. That is 14,000 too many. Victims and survivors should never be left in the dark. These kits should not only be processed timely, survivors deserve to know the status of their kits. And that is why we are here today. Today we are announcing our next steps to support survivors of sexual assault. First, the California Department of Justice is launching a new online portal to allow survivors of sexual assault to track the status of their sexual assault evidence kits. And second, the DOJ has hired the first, uh, the state's first ever sexual assault evidence outreach coordinator, Dr. Sarai Crane, who will work directly with law enforcement, with medical facilities, and other partner organizations to support local efforts to timely track and process sexual assault evidence. She represents the priority, the commitment, the significance, the importance of uh, making sure that we have no backlogs and that sexual assault evidence kits are timely processed. These new initiatives aim to clear the backlog of sexual assault evidence at the local level, ensure timely processing of sexual assault evidence, and increase transparency and access to information for survivors. The new portal launched as a result of the passage of Senator Connie Leva's SB 215, thank you, Senator, is an easy to use tool live now at kitstatus.doj.ca.gov that enables survivors of sexual assault to privately, securely, and electronically track the status and location of their sexual assault evidence kit. As a result of the new portal, survivors, by entering their kit number, and the name of the investigating agency are now able to learn in real time whether their sexual assault evidence kit has been received by a law enforcement agency, is in transit to a lab, has been received by a lab, is undergoing DNA analysis, or has had DNA analysis completed. They can know 
the status of the sexual assault evidence kit. Importantly, with survivors' privacy so fundamental, I want to stress there are critical safeguards against potential misuse. The portal, among other protection measures, only allows access to status and location data and limits the number of times the system can be queried. The underlying database does not, does not include fields to collect personally identifying information such as name, address, or date of birth of victims and suspects. In addition uh, to this portal, as part of the broader effort to assist law enforcement agencies, public crime laboratories, and medical facilities with addressing this challenge and ensuring sexual assault evidence is processed, we are bringing on board DOJ's first ever statewide level sexual assault evidence outreach coordinator, Dr. Sarai Crane. Dr. Crane will work to identify and to remove barriers to testing, connect law enforcement agencies in need of testing assistance with public crime laboratories and private vendors, and promote awareness of public resources. Dr. Crane most recently served as the deputy chief for the City of Oakland's Department of Violence Prevention, where she developed a citywide strategic plan for gender-based violence prevention and intervention programs, and we're so proud to bring her on board to lead this very important and very large statewide effort. I want to close with an important message. There is no place for sexual assault in California or anywhere. Sexual assault is an abhorrent and reprehensible crime. It demands real consequences, and most importantly, victims and survivors deserve justice. My office is committed to doing everything in our power to support survivors, reduce harm, and secure justice. That's exactly what the new actions we're announcing today are all about, supporting survivors by increasing access to the information to which they are entitled under the law and supporting our local partners in their efforts to process sexual assault evidence. Sexual assault can be one of the most traumatizing experiences in someone's life. We must ensure survivors get the resources, the information, and the justice that they deserve. Together at DOJ and with our partners, we will continue to fight against sexual abuse in all its forms. Thank you. And I'd now like to introduce our next speaker, my former colleague and my friend, Senator Connie Leva. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney General Bonta. Good morning. I'm Connie Leva, State Senator representing Senate District 20. Even though this is a grave and serious issue, I'm so excited to be here with you today because we never know what is going to turn a victim into a survivor. We think that SB 215 will help turn victims into survivors. It's a pleasure to join Attorney Bonta and other local state and leaders and advocates today as we announce this vital step forward to empower rape survivors. We know that rape is not about sex. We know it's about control. 215 is about helping victims become survivors and take control back. As the author, author of 215 that was signed into law just one year ago, I firmly believe that this portal is long overdue and we now in California join over two dozen states who do just the same thing. You heard also that there will be a statewide sexual assault evidence outreach coordinator. This is huge to make sure that survivors have a place to go. I find it absolutely unacceptable that until now, rape survivors have had to contact law enforcement agencies by phone or in person to find out where their rape kit is and the status. As one survivor told me when we were working on this bill, I don't have to call that disinterested detective anymore. Again, we're giving control and power back to the person who was raped. Until now, this has not been something that a survivor could do. It's a very sensitive issue and it has not always been private. Now it will be private. Anyone who has undergone a rape kit exam will tell you the entire process is long and it's invasive. It happens soon after the survivor has undergone an experience that is more traumatic than any of us may ever know. I very much appreciate Attorney General, Attorney General Bonta's partnership with Team Leva on this effort, as well as our terrific and dedicated coalition of SB 215 sponsors, District Attorney Nancy O'Malley, who will be up next, Joyful Heart Foundation, and Natasha's Justice Project. 
We couldn't do, have done any of it without them. And last, but certainly not least, I would like to thank the countless supporters who took time out of their busy lives and testified in committee, tweeted, traveled, wrote letters, talked to legislators, and spoke out about the critical need to make this online portal a reality. Thank you to all of them, and thank you to all of the victims who have become survivors and made this possible. Thank you again uh, to our district attorney, Bonta. And now I would like to introduce my friend, someone who's worked with us on many of these issues, District o Attorney O'Malley from Alameda County. Thank you, Senator, and I want to give particular thanks to Attorney General Bonta for putting these issues of sexual assault and interpersonal violence at the level of importance that they deserve and they absolutely need. Ensuring that safety is now operational puts California among the few states who have taken steps to empower those who have fallen victim to sexual assault or other sexually violent conduct while the country seems to be cutting back on the rights and protections of victims, Attorney General Bonta, through his leadership and his office, are ensuring California is not one of those states. The appointment of Dr. Sri Crane, with her experience both as an advocate and a leader, will ensure that we are working together to make California safer for women, girls, and men and boys. I have worked closely with Dr. Crane for several years and knew her and knew of her well before we started working together. She is a strong leader, a brilliant leader, and a compassionate woman who has supported thousands and thousands of women who have been victimized or marginalized. My journey started in this area in the 70s as a rape crisis volunteer. My advocacy continued through the Alameda County District Attorney's Office both as a trial lawyer and then as the head of our sexual assault unit and now as the district attorney. DNA was just evolving and my office tried the first DNA case which went all the way to the California Supreme Court to determine whether or not this was a viable science. And in fact, the Supreme Court did rule that it was both a valuable science and a legally accepted science. Along with my trial and advocacy work, I've had the honor of writing bills and working with legislators and the legislature to enhance the rights and protections of victims of crime and other significant statutory change, changes. The first bill I had uh, in, was in 1990, which involved changing the courtroom around when children were testifying, so it was not so intimidating. But I will tell you that it's been my greatest honor to work with Senator Connie Leva. She's been a pillar of strength through the Women's Caucus, through her own legislation. She's had the firm commitment and the strength of character to move forward even on controversial or less popular public policy, such as making uh, mandatory testing of rape kits and other important uh, issues that Senator Leva has put forth that have now become law in California. It is she who has reinforced the empowerment to those who have been sexually assaulted and for that period of time stripped of all choice of what they're doing and how they are being treated. Knowledge is power and power brings healing. Now that safety is operational, survivors can track the progress as, uh, attempts, as Attorney General Bonta said, survivors can track the progress of their own kit, including that the kit has actually been entered into safety and is moving forward through its, uh, through its ev evaluation and testing. The enforcement and being processed by the crime lab in a statutorily appropriate amount of time, not 15 years later, not 30 years later, not two years later, but in, within 120 days of the receipt of the kit. I am very proud to stand with Attorney General Bonta, with Senator Leva, and with my colleagues, Natasha from Natasha Justice Project and with Ilsa from Joyful Heart, who have been going around the country ensuring that other states and communities have the same opportunities to create laws as they have helped us do here in California. These laws uh, touch, unfortunately, 
thousands and thousands and thousands of victims every year. I also just want to take a moment and thank the YWCA of Greater Los Angeles under the leadership of Ms. Washington and friends that I haven't seen in a while that we've been working on this stuff forever. Um, you know, this organization that has been around for hundreds, hundreds, more than 100 years has uh, really touched the lives of millions of children, women, and families. So many programs they've created that support women and their children and their families. It has given powerful focus in addressing racial justice and public policy, and through its programming, helping women and families, and especially, especially children, find that solid pathway to move forward, to be successful, to be proud in their endeavors, and to find happiness. Everything we are talking about here demonstrates the commitment to and the caring for our California communities. I thank you again to Attorney General Bonta and to Senator Leva and to all of the partners that have helped make safety a reality for victim survivors of sexual assault. Thank you. And now we will hear from Faye Washington. What an amazing speaker to come after. But I will do my best. I, I am so overwhelmed. I got some little notes here. If I don't get to them, don't hold it against me. Because I've heard some words here today that senses a spirit of emboldenment in what it is we do. But more importantly, it tells us what we have done right. Because you see, our mission is the empowerment of women, the elimination of racism. And today, Attorney General Bonta, Connie Leva, Maggie, thank you. I have not worked with you. I have worked individually with these two ladies. And I didn't know we were working on such a powerful team. <laughs> you guys are awesome. So are you. And, and then the next time we're trying to pull something off here in LA, I'm going to call you. Okay. Sharon, Barbara, you got that? This is, this is the posse right here. Los Angeles has been around for over 120 five years, the YWCA, and we've been at the work of the empowerment of women, the elimination of racism, wherever it exists and by any means necessary. And we've done that to the best of our ability. We are perhaps, I think, the largest uh, sexual assault provider uh, in LA, in this town, in this whole entire area, probably in our, na in our national body. The, the nation of Los Angeles, of, of um, the United States YWCA has the largest convening body. But outside of that, we have the largest. We're in three distinct areas within Los Angeles. We're also on two college campuses, the college campus of Cerritos College and the college campus of USC. And there's no shortage of work there. In fact, if we had the dollars, I don't know how you can help me on that, <laughs> but I, I thought I'd put it out there. If we had the dollars, we could open four more facilities right today. But I tell you, the bill 215, SB 215, that's recently been passed, is going to assist our efforts so much because the young ladies or the young men that come in with the complaints, they can get assistance. We have the capacity to help them get assistance and we're in a better position of creating movement and adjudication in these issues. And that makes us happy. I'm gonna introduce my staff to you because those are the hardworking ladies that really work and make it all happen. But this has been an incredible moment and I was invited to come and speak. I don't know why, because I'm the re we are the recipient. We we just received a great gift, and and my words are simply this: Thank you 
for the hard work that you've done to create this portal. Thank you for not only creating the portal, but for taking that next step, and that's appointing someone to manage that portal. Because I've never been an elected official, but elected officials somehow, some way, they forget that little piece, that last piece. It takes someone to run it, to operate it, to make certain everything is connected. All the dots are in place, and you did that. And because you did that, and you put a team together that was so awesome, I want to know if I can join your team. Yes, <laughs> come on down. <laughs> but you have good work You're to always, do here. Uh, okay, I, I have good work to do here. Okay, <laughs> they, they said no. <laughs> That's all right, I'm still going to work. <laughs> but what you have done here has really empowered our organization here to do this, that would, which we've done, and even more. Ruth, do I have something? I gotta hurry up. I have something for you, Attorney General. Bonta. It's called, I, I have to share the story before you can see it. <laughs> this this uh, painting was commissioned by the YWCA of Greater Los Angeles, and it was commissioned because someone told a very famous artist that we are powerful. We believe it, she believed it. Her name is Cynthia St. James. She's a highly acclaimed artist. And this picture is called Powerful, and it is presented to our AG, wow. Rob Bonta. Thank you. Thank you. Because you are powerful. <laughs> and you. we love you for it. We thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, this is a great, beautiful backdrop here. Great idea. That's why he's the attorney general. He's got great ideas. He's the only guy up here. Hi, my, my name is Natasha Simone Alexanko. Um, I'm a survivor of sexual assault. I'm also a survivor of the backlog of unprocessed rape kits. Uh, before I share my story and explain how something of this nature can change someone's life, I would like to really state that um, as survivors, we have agency over our own stories. We are not merely props being brought out to elicit emotion. We are feeling, loving people with our own unique experiences and perspectives on the assault that took place. I have chosen to share my story. No survivor, that is not the duty of any survivor. And regardless of where you sit in your story, recognize that you have value and that I always carry each and every one of you in my heart. And one of the reasons I'm propelled to work on these sorts of legislation is because of all the people that have approached me on the side, old friends, people I've met who've experienced this because, you know, as the Attorney General said, this is, this is a crime that occurs on such a regular basis. So I just wanted to say that before I share my story. And the other reason I'm really able to articulate is because the group of individuals and organizations that are behind me have always treated me as an equal. They have listened to me. They have taken my input. They have treated me as an equal and as someone whose story has, holds value to something amazing that's being created. So the fact that I feel empowered to share my story is because I am in a safe space from people who do not treat me any different and in fact give me agency to share and express my own personal opinions um, including the organization Voice I work for that holds that philosophy of um, only the communities that you're serving um, 
need to be present to share their ideas. And without those voices and without listening and uplifting those communities that you're serving, um, there's really not much that can be done. So I appreciate um, that I've always been treated as an equal and I've learned and admired and respected so much the courage that all of you have shown behind me. This is a gigantic endeavor. So my story of sexual assault happened while I was a college student. I was raped and robbed at gunpoint. Um, to say that it altered my trajectory is a huge understatement. You know, my initial instinct after the assault was to take a shower. My roommate at the time said, we've got to get you to a hospital. You have to have a sexual assault evidence kit collected because your body is a crime scene. And without that evidence, we will never find your perpetrator and they will be harming others across the country, across the world. So going against my instinct, I went and submitted to an examination. I have to say as a survivor, my, through my personal journey through this, it was the last thing I wanted to do, to be poked and prodded and reminded of everything that happened and have to articulate every detail. It was something I don't regret, but it was certainly the last thing I wanted to do. Um, so I cooperated because I wanted to do my part to create a safer place where someone that would rape and rob someone could be found and held accountable. Unbeknownst to me, my rape kit sat on a shelf for nearly a decade collecting dust with nearly 14,000 other kits. And each kit represents a human being with their own story, their own people that love them, their own journeys, and it was inexcusable. But see, I had no idea that my rape kit had not been processed. I kind of ran under the assumption that it had been processed and that the reason we hadn't apprehended the man that assaulted me was because I was not a good complaining witness, because I didn't do a good job at articulating what he looked like, and so I blame myself. And I have to say, and again, every survivor's journey is different, but the hardest thing I had to recover from was this idea of blaming myself for not apprehending someone and the fact that there were other victims across the nation. Each one was my fault. And that was a really difficult burden to bear because I didn't know. I assumed my rape kit was tested. Of course, you know, as, as time passed on after 10 years, I discovered the issue with my rape kit. I was treated with respect and dignity by the DA's office. Um, and we did find the man that raped and robbed me at gunpoint. He is presently behind bars where he can no longer harm anyone. But in the interim, as my rape kit sat collecting dust, he was on a nationwide crime spree harming others, victimizing others. He was, you know, a public safety catastrophe. So when we talk about these sorts of initiatives that start, of course, with champions like D.A. O'Malley and uh, Senator Leva and Elsa from Joyful Heart, who come up with an idea that at first seems incomprehensible, but also very basic. I mean, we track our Amazon packages. Why shouldn't we be able to see where a rape kit is? And then what, what, how that would change, have changed my life? That would have changed everything for me and my family, for that matter. If I had known where my rape kit was in the process, if I had known my value in the investigative process, and if I had known that someone cared that much to create such a system, and then you have the AG's office and the Department of Justice working together to implement this idea that initially was on paper as a bill. And I will tell you this, this is not an easy undertaking for the DOJ and the AG's office. This is a whole new system. It requires additional workload to an organization that's already has their plates overflowing. And I will tell you this as a survivor, I hope survivors out there who are listening recognize that the DOJ listened to me. They actually asked what I thought about things and it wasn't easy for them. And to be respected, 
on that level by such an entity in the AG's office and O'Malley and Leva and Elsa has changed who I am. Um, Nancy, I believe you spoke and Senator Leva about the difference between a victim and a survivor. And the journey is complicated and, and difficult. It's not a straight trajectory, but all of these things along the way, again, especially being surrounded by incredible people and it's a rarity to find lawmakers, elected officials and organizations, including this YWCA, who are altruistic, who care, don't take no for an answer, and most importantly, listen to their constituents, even if it's not the easy thing to do, even if it's not the thing that's going to get you all the accolades and the appreciation from the general public or the votes. And that has not only changed me as a survivor, but as a, as a woman and a person. And I hope that we can just replicate who all you are <laughs> and just kind of move forward throughout, throughout the country. I mean, that's the dream is to just constantly be your cheerleaders so that others will pick up the mantle and continue on this great work you're doing. So again, I, I'm honored. I'm humbled to be here. I, I am so happy for survivors in California for this. Um, it's a small step. There's a ways to go. This is not the end. It's not the beginning either, but it's a tremendous step letting you know that you matter. Your stories matter, and you are part of a multidisciplinary team that brings justice, and you're a part of that team. So I'm honored to be here my representing my organization, Voice, and all of these amazing people I'm humbled to be standing in front of. And thank you. Thank you all very much. <clears throat> thank you so much, Natasha. It's been such a pleasure to work with you. And you're just such a strong person. I don't even know what to say after, after Natasha speaking because she's so eloquent. Um, and she just goes off the top of her head. It's amazing. <laughs> um, I'm Ilsa Connect. I'm the Director of Policy and Advocacy for the Joyful Heart Foundation. Uh, Joyful Heart Foundation was founded by Law and Order SVU actress and advocate Mariska Hargitay. And in 2010, we made eliminating the nation's rape kit backlog our top priority. Since 2014, we and our partners here have been working to identify the true scope of the untested rape kit backlog in California since 2014. We sponsored um, AB 3118 in 2018 with then Assembly Member David Chu that mandated an inventory of untested kits, but still, years later, we still do not have a number. In fact, in the report in 2020 that came a, a, as a result of that inventory, only 149 agencies out of 708 sent their numbers in. No medical facilities complied with the inventory. So even yet at that point, we found almost 14,000 untested rape kits. And as Natasha spoke about what is so important, and I'm just kind of glad to come at the end and wrap this up and say, is that we have to remember, like Natasha, every single one of these kits sitting on a shelf represents a person who has gone through the most terrible experience that they probably will ever go through in their life. And like Natasha has done everything that society asks them to do, report the crime, not take a shower when that's the first thing they want to do, have evidence collected in an evasive and uncomfortable four to six hour invest in, um, examination that, you know, in the best of circumstances is, is not an easy task and only to be ignored and their kits shelved. It's often case closed before it's even open. So we owe it to survivors to do better here in California and across the country and to communities because we heard Natasha's, the offender, was a one-man crime wave. And we see this over and over and over again across the country when we take these old kits off the shelves and test them. Some of these offenders are operating with impunity for decades. They're not only committing sexual assault, by the way, they're committing all kinds of crime. They, anything from carjacking, theft, burglary. Uh, domestic violence, child abuse, homicide. They're not specialists and they don't stop until they're stopped. So we're so thankful to the AG for creating this important position that will focus on ending the backlog once and for all in California. And what's more, the new online portal is so key to helping victims heal. Again, you heard it from Natasha. 
Survivors want and deserve information about their rape kits. It is central to their healing and their well-being, and not having access to information is actually detrimental to their healing. These two achievements tell survivors that what happened to them matters and that they matter. So I want to thank Attorney General Bonta for these survivor-centered steps and for all of our partners here, DA O'Malley, Senator Leva, Natasha's Justice Project. It's been, as many people said, an amazing team to work with, and we're just so glad to be a part of this um, incredible, incredible step forward for survivors in California. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I, I just want to put a point of emphasis on just the in incredible leaders who are here, their, their powerful voices, their, um, their vision, their values, their fight, their uh, raising the, the alarm and, and raising the level of urgency here to, to get to where we are today. I'm, I'm proud and honored uh, to be the leader of uh, the California Department of Justice doing our part to work with uh, and support their efforts. Um, but as mentioned, uh, many of them have been in this fight for a long time. And, and uh, this progress uh, that we've made today um, is, is their victory, and I'm honored to uh, be part of it with them, knowing full well that there's more to do. Um, but today is a day uh, to acknowledge an, an important step of progress along the way to help survivors heal, to bring justice and increase public safety.